I'm Tim Marlowe, and every month I'll be bringing you my personal selection of the most exciting events and exhibitions from across the international calendar. This month, a fresh look at an Italian neoclassical great, an exhibition devoted to the ongoing career of a pivotal American painter, and an exciting new industrial-scaled arts venue finally opens its vast doors. But first, here in London, we have a glittering star of a show. The V&A's new exhibition celebrates the creativity, courage, image and impact of performers from stage, screen and beyond from the 19th century to the present day, taking its title from an Italian term for goddess. Diva will showcase over 250 objects spanning fashion, photography, design, costume, music and live performance. This is an exhibition in two acts, and the first of its kind to give a museological voice to everyone from opera goddesses to the stars of the silent screen to Hollywood in its heyday right up to the present. Spectacular costumes range from those worn by Maria Callas in Norma and Marilyn Monroe in Some Like It Hot to outfits designed for Tina Turner and Janelle Monet, not to mention Elton John's 50th birthday suit. It will doubtless be seen as over the top by some, but that's surely part of its critical underpinning, an attempt to reclaim and redefine the idea of the diva as a radical performer over the past century and a half. The National Gallery of Art in Washington is remodelling and roughing up a little the polished perfection of the sublime Antonio Canova. The grace, serenity and poise of Canova's marble sculptures and his mastery of material still seem miraculous, with so little a trace of the artist's hand being visible. However, this exhibition wants to shine a light on a more expressive artist, a giant of late 18th, early 19th century stone sculpture, who, it turns out, also relished the fluidity and feel of clay in his ultimate pursuit of a neoclassical perfection. With over two-thirds of his surviving models on display, Canova Sketching in Clay is the first exhibition in over 50 years to focus on the artist's terracottas, and it may help reassess a reputation previously very much set in stone. In the Netherlands, there's a major survey of a celebrated American figurative painter best known for his large-scale works with a minimalist aesthetic. The 95-year-old Alex Katz emerged to prominence back in the 1950s, both in reaction to abstract expressionism and as an important precursor of pop art, but he remains a singular figure in post-war American art. His work of pure colours, smooth surfaces and delicate lines, all of which have had profound impact on advertising and graphic design, should be mute. But for me, it's charged with a physical and cultural presence that should look both poetic and spectacular in the elegant and airy spaces of the Museum vor Linden, set in the Dutch countryside just outside The Hague. The show, a collaboration between the institution and the artist, featuring both Katz as portraits and landscapes, continues to emphasise that Katz is not just a painter's painter, revered by numerous younger artists, but also a painter more than capable of striking a broader public chord. Last up, the opening of perhaps the most significant new arts institution in the UK since Tate Modern back in 2000. Although not fully unveiled until October, Factory International in Manchester will welcome its first visitors in June and be a key venue for the Manchester International Festival this summer, hosting Yayo Kasama's You, Me and the Balloons, the largest ever immersive installation by the globally renowned Japanese artist. The building, designed by Ellen Van Loon from Rem Koolhaas's practice OMA, will span over 13,000 square metres, an incredibly ambitious space for cultural activity in a city that feels more than ready to feature more prominently on the international stage. As always with the UK, funding major projects is an issue, but you have to hope and believe that with a cultural landmark of this magnitude, money won't be the defining factor. And as they say over the next few years, watch this space. So those are my picks, the unmissable shows from around the world this June. I do hope you get to see at least one of them. Mm -hmm.